Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and welcome back to this week's episode of Tree Marketing. With me today is my co-host, Big Jim Mack, all the way over in Canada. So, Jim, how are you doing this morning? Ah, oh, fantastic, fantastic. My, my birthday's coming up. Getting older by the day, but no, no complaints. Life is good. Is it 30th of June, isn't it? Your birthday? Yeah, yeah, it's coming up here. I guess it's yeah, in like four days. So once this is recording a little bit early, but this is the June 26th episode. So yeah, four days away. Yeah, 46. and mine will be the week after that. So about two weeks time. You're a July guy. I didn't realize that. Yeah, 6th of July. You can note that down in your calendar if you need to. Anyone? <laughs> For sure. Send all to I'm uh, so keen. I'm so keen to get some big Jim Mac shirts. You, you might be one of... I don't know. Maybe my kids would want one. I'm trying to think who else would be dying for J big Jim Mack shirt, but uh, that's, no, that's very, very kind of you. A, a caricature of you there, and it just says big Jim Mack. And then a little <laughs> writing underneath it says, and Tyson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll see about that. Yeah. And people go, people look at it and go, who the hell's Tyson? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Just some guy I hang out and record a podcast with on Tuesday nights. No big deal. Yeah. So what are we talking about today? We're getting to the, the middle of the year, so I thought it would be a good idea to go over just some things. How can people reflect on that the first six months of 2023? What are some constructive ways to look at what you've done so far and, and where you want to go for the rest of 2023? Okay. Yeah, it's an interesting time of the year, especially for in Australia, as we head towards June 30 is our end of financial year. So when we wrap up, then it's one of those things where you have this big goal and you're, you're trying to pay certain bills beforehand to try and get them in this tax year and then 1st of July. So I know a lot of times you'll have like calendar goals, but in Australia, we have, we work a lot on that financial year and yeah, and it is, you're really reflecting not just over the last six months, but over the last 12 months as well. No, no, for sure. And I think it's interesting in North America, it's like I said, it's that first half of the year, but Maybe school's been out for a little while. People are going on summer vacation. So it's LA. The summertime's a bit of a time in North America to rest and recharge a bit. But you're going to probably have a little bit of time. Not that the clinic's necessarily slower because it can be a busy time, but it's a good time to step back, reflect a little bit about what was working well for the first six months, and then where you want to go for the rest of the year. Because there's still another there's July, August, September, October, November, December left in the year. And if you've done great, it's a great way to charge up be charged up as far as, wow, that was a great first six months. Let's keep the momentum going. And maybe you've experimented. You've done a few things that haven't worked out as well, but it's a, we got six more months this year to keep things ramping up. And 2023 hasn't been necessarily the easiest year, economically speaking. There's all kinds of banking and mark, market turbulence, and it's never, it's never easy, but it's a good chance to get some motivation going to the second half of the year. I must admit, when all the bad news that goes on in the world for the last 30 years, this will sound really, I don't know, this might sound bad or insightful. Depends which way you look at it. But I've never really got involved. I don't know if it makes any sense. But even when the whole global financial crisis was going on, and there, to, there were different people that knew dentists and other health professionals, we went, oh, business is really bad because of the global financial crisis. It, they were the best years I ever had. But my business grew so much over that same time. So while everybody else was shouting doom and gloom, I decided not to participate. I just went, no, I'm just going to just keep getting on with building my business. And who's to say that if it hadn't been for the global financial crisis, my business may have grown even more. Maybe it still grew, just not as much as it could have. Don't know. Yeah. The news is definitely interesting, right? You have to be aware enough of things that are happening within the profession and be aware enough as far as what things are changing, what are things that people have to deal with to, to be able to adapt. But at the same time, like you said, you can't dwell on it. If you can dwell mm. on it, then you're, like you said, you're going to, if it's all doom and gloom and you don't have, but people are still going to have foot and ankle problems no matter what's happening with the global financial market. So it's a matter of be, being aware, but at the same time, like you said, not focusing on that negative aspect of whatever's in the news or what the end of the world that's coming up near just is taking one day at a time. I said to my wife the other day that we were home at six o'clock and that's when the news comes on here. And for some reason, we sat there and watched it. I have not watched the news, I reckon, probably three years before I've seen an actual half-hour news. I wanted to jump off the roof of my house. It was so bad. There were like 10 stories and there were 11 victims. It was just awful. Everything was just doom and gloom. And I went, I do not understand how people can watch it every night and still feel positive each day. I said, it's really difficult. But what I figured out, if you listen to the news on the radio, on a music channel, the news is concise to about two minutes and you only get the main facts. You don't get all the rubbish and, and everything else. So if people want to keep up with the news, 
I reckon the radio is the <laughs> better way of doing it. No, for sure. But yeah, like jumping back into as far as the, the, the positive side of things, the, back to your clinic, back to the progress you're making at your practice. I like to break it up into two sections to start off with. The first section being like, what's going on with your clinic in general? Qualitatively, obviously, without the numbers in front of you, like what has your feeling been like for during this first six months, right? How is things going with your staff? Have you retained all your staff? Are you having issues? I know that especially these days, there's been a jump not only in inflation, but in sometimes staff wages, right? So are you able to retain that talent within your clinic to make sure that your operations are running smoothly? Because I think there is a lot of, whether it be a medical assistance or front desk people, there's different kinds of opportunities that are cropping up all the time now. So if they're looking for a higher wage, can you match that? Or are there benefits you provide for your clinic? So you're getting a general kind of qualitative feeling about your staff, the overall higher practices running. Are you seeing the type of patients you want to see? And what your level of kind of professional satisfaction is currently. They don't, like I said, that's that qualitative assessment, right? Like kind of the gut check as far as like, how do you think things are going? And that's, it's not the only way to analyze and look at the first half of the year, but it does give you a general sense of, okay, how do you feel things are going? Should you ask your team the same question? But you're asking yourself, how is the team going? And whether they've stayed, have you lost team members? And other aspects of your business, should you ask your team the exact same question and get their feedback on how they feel uh, things have gone? Yeah, and definitely it depends on what kind of, I think reviews and having open dialogues uh, and providing feedback to your staff is obviously hugely important. Some people will work on that on a quarterly basis. Some people will do it once every six months, but it is good to check in with them and see how they're doing because obviously maybe it can be for, per we're working these people all day, all year long, but Sometimes it can be at a super, not initially superficial level, but you have work to do. You're working on the patients. That's the priority. That's the focus. But taking time either once a month, once every quarter, once every six months, just to check in with people and see how they're doing on a personal level. Do they have a, a sick kid at home that like, they need to go get a better job with a higher paying job? Or is, is there other things going on in their lives? Are they satisfied with the type of role they're in? So yeah. I think it is, I think you bring up an important component is, that, that kind of qualitative assessment of your staff should be done on a consistent basis, but it's going to depend on, do you have a manager? Are you the manager? Like, how do you, like, how do, what do you have time for? And like, how can you make sure that you're staying in touch with those employees in your practice to make sure that they're at a, satisfied and, and thriving so that it'll help you and your practice continue to make traction and, and progress. So have you heard businesses where they will have a happiness meter? They measure, they try to measure the happiness in their business. I've seen different things where there's like kind of these like employee surveys that come out yeah. and you can like one to five, like how's that person doing or how are they feeling about the work? And I think that can be beneficial. I don't know if it's done on a weekly basis, but if it's done daily, I think people just get used to clicking a button and probably just saying they're happy yeah. just to get it done with something less, less frequent might be better to get a general sense of things, whether it be monthly, like I said, or if you're doing something like that. So some type of sequence or some type of check-in with that employee can be definitely helpful. But it's like I said, it's going to really vary between do you want to do a little bit on software or do you want to have those kind of heart-to-heart -heart or those like face-to-face -face conversations with some professional feedback, but also a chance to listen to them and understand how they're doing. Yeah, I remember listening to a person on a podcast and they were talking about measuring happiness in their business. And that was like one of the big things was they give themselves a happiness ranking. and But they based it on arguments between staff because as the business owner, they would have staff come to complain about certain things. So they would be noting down, oh, there were less complaints from patients. And that, that's how they, because that's how they worked out how they felt the business was on a happiness level based on certain things that would not happen in the business. No, I think it's a good point. I think the harmony of your staff, sometimes obviously some turnovers is going to be normal. If you're in a really small clinic, maybe you can hold on to somebody longer, but if the larger your clinic gets and the more podiatrists you have, probably means you're going to have a little more turnover, but having some kind of way to assess the, the culture and the team morale is really important. I think as you grow, having those, because you can't have our conversation with everyone every single day. So finding some systems to put in place with this happiness meter or so, some way to general uh, assess the general attitude and uh, satisfaction of your employees is super important. But once you get past the qualitative thing, the kind of assessment and kind of see how things are going, I think there is really benefit. We talked about this in some past episodes is really getting to the, the quantitative aspects of your clinic. So that means how many new patients did you have? 
for the last six months or the last year and kind of know what those yeah. numbers are. What are you doing as far as a number of procedures and different types of diagnosis that are coming through the door? So really taking a hard look at those numbers and getting a general sense of maybe it's in the U.S. and in Canada somewhat. What insurance plans are, are coming to see you? What, where's your referrals coming from in your clinic? Really having some core metrics to look at. And, and, and sometimes people will sometimes drill down too much into days, into weeks, and even into months. You want to be aware of what those, what's happening from month to month. If there's some huge drop-off, like you did something that might have caused it, or if there was something that maybe there's a new staff member on the phones or something, the month to month is important. But really what you want to look at is tr in trends of these things from over the course of a year or from, a, from one quarter to the next quarter, what are things looking like, like from all those kind of, kind of key performance indicators of those things that you're trying to achieve to make sure you're measuring those things. Like I said, you got to measure it first so you can write the ship or you can correct things. If you don't, you know, if it's not measured, you, you can't make any real actions to help correct those things. So I think that's a really important part of your clinic is having those quantitative, that data will help you make better decisions moving forward. Yeah. And like they say, numbers don't lie. Any people lie because it's true. Like the numbers you, you can't lie with numbers that they, they are what they are. And it's, then it comes down to how you actually interpret them. But I did what you said about looking at things on a quarterly basis as well, because you can have a bad week or you can have a bad day. You can have a bad week. You can even have a, a bad month, but you shouldn't have a bad quarter and two good months and one bad month. Can, you can still have a trend at, yeah, a quarter that trends upwards, which is okay. But if you have a couple of, if, if you have a bad quarter, then that's a sign that something needs to change or something's amiss. Yeah, exactly. I think, like you said, if you're, if the, the spikes will go up and down on a weekly or monthly basis sometimes, and it can be very like, you, you want to be proactive, but not reactive, right? So you don't want to like look at that month and you're just like, oh my gosh, what happened? Like trying to, it's good to run yourself through an exercise to try to determine what you think might have happened and mm. make me make some slight adjustments. But I think any big adjustments, like from a strategic standpoint, those things should really be focused more on a quarterly basis because otherwise you're just trying to put out fire after fire sometimes. And sometimes running a business and taking good care of patients is already busy enough, let alone you trying to solve every, what happened every single week or every single month. But you can see the trends over the course of, of quarters. And like you said, you can take appropriate action to rectify that much more, uh, on it, much more easily. And I would say also besides just the clinical aspects of things, really looking into your marketing on a quantitative level, right? Are you getting, you know, what kind of patients are you getting? Or what is the feeling that you're trying to do some experiments to say in your marketing? Is yeah. this, do you feel like it's being received? Are you getting things parroted back to you from patients that maybe it was a Facebook ad or you're, or you're checking in on patients as like you talked about with some of the stuff you've done with your traditional marketing, right? There's certain things that, you know, whether it be a phrase or you can just tell that they read something or they, that something you put out there without even measuring it. You just get the feeling that this is working. It's made, I'm getting, I did an orthotics Facebook ad for two months and now I can just, I'm getting all these orthotic patients, right? So does it yeah. feel like it's working? So getting that kind of qualitative gut check about your marketing is, is an important component as well. Yeah, I think the marketing side of things is super important. And, that, and I think that's where, yeah, strategy and tactics can sometimes get mixed up where, yeah, the strategy is the, the you know, like what you want to do. It's a plan to get to the goal you want to achieve. And the tactics are just the things you're going to do, the actions you're going to take. And sometimes they might be looking at their figures and thinking, oh, I'm not going to reach my goals. So they, they're constantly, it's okay for the tactics to change, but the strategy should always stay the same. Yeah, and I think one thing that we talk about on, on this podcast quite a bit is like finding your niche within podiatry, right? Do you want to be a sports medicine doctor? Do you want to be a wound care specialist? Do you want to be the surgeon? Do you want to be known as the best person to go for ingrown toenails? And that quantitative, the quantitative aspect of things Definitely, we'll we'll get into that. Are you, do you feel like you're doing more of the work you love? Are you? Is it easier to get out of bed? Or are you excited that your schedule is going to be full for the last month since doing this thing? You've just seen more of those patients you want to see. So that kind of like bleeds into that the quantitative stuff. Like we talked about, if you're doing a campaign about sports medicine or doing Google ads or Facebook ads, or you're running an ad in a local paper about, uh, or you're doing a partnership with maybe the local Aussie football club or the, the local soccer club. Do you feel like that sometimes you'll get the ability to verify those numbers, right? So if you're doing something, maybe you have a special website URL for 
the newspaper ad you're doing. Go to pro arch podiatry backslash foot or foot. Or, and if you know that you got 500 people that came from that very special, that link that only showed up in an ad, you can really determine the data as far as what's working and not working when you do something like that. Google ads and, and Facebook ads also allow for you to see who clicks through and who makes appointments from those kinds of things. And you can even more simply ask on some of the patient intake forms about how did you hear about the clinic to get a general sense of what, what channels are working well. But tying that kind of qualitative feeling into hard numbers, and like you talked about, that are tied to not only, it's really tied into kind of the patients you want to see. So th those kind of, we talked about in your clinic, what is the moving the needle on the clinical aspect of things that's tied into your marketing and making those connections is hugely important to make sure that this first six months are moving in that direction and it's, and it's working, you're getting that return on investment. So a lot of this too would all, yeah, going back a little bit, would all relate to the goals that you want to achieve in the future. Right. So like you, so you need to sit down and work out what is it that you want to achieve for your business? Because I think if you're as a business owner, you're sitting there, yeah, I don't care if we have a great month or, or not, or we get more patients. I think if, if you don't care, then you don't need to, actually, you shouldn't have been listening to this podcast. Turn it off now. Go away. <laughs> but I think most of the people listening to this, the reason they're listening to this podcast is because they care about their business. And if they care about their business, then they should have goals in place. And if you've got goals in place, then you need to be looking at certain things about your business to know that you're heading in a forward direction. No, exactly. And I think we talked about, I, I sometimes simply break it down into these like different categories, these different niches, but it can also be, you just want to become the kind of the foot and ankle expert with kind of shockwave, for example, you just want to be known as that person in your local area that does shockwave. So you can do things. It's not only just the patient you're seeing, but are, have you undergone the proper education? The kind of, have you been to some meetings? Are you really learning from other people that have done it before you? Are you making progress in your own career to want to do and to be the best at doing that thing? So yeah, it can be sometimes about those clinical numbers and the marketing numbers, but it's also about what do you like to do within the profession? And are you doing things that help you enjoy it even more over time. Like you said, it is about sometimes clinical objectives, sometimes marketing objectives, sometimes professional objectives you have. This mid-year check-in is a way to take all that kind of inputs from the, the first six months and really think to yourself, am I making traction? Am I moving that direction in my practice I want to move? Because when you're in the day-to-day -day or for week-to-week, -week, you've got a busy clinic, you've got a, people to take care of, you have staff to oversee, you've got things going on, but you got to take time every so often just to like pause for maybe it's a couple hours, maybe it's a half a day, but to really reflect on what direction your practice is going to, because there's a lot of outside forces that will try to take your own practice into a different way that maybe you don't want to go. Maybe it's going mm. perfect and you're just on that road and nothing's going to stop you. But sometimes it's, you like doing sports medicine, but now someone's sending you all these wound care patients. And while that's nice in some way, because it's, they respect you and they're sending you patients your way, it's not really who you want to see. So how can you turn that kind of either negative into a positive, right? Is there someone else that you know that does a great job with the wound care that you can hook them up with this and then maybe they'll send you more sports medicine patients. So it's a matter of just like strategic thinking. It's like you talked about Tyson. It's not only tactics and getting caught in the day-to-day, -day, but stepping back a little bit. So maybe it's with your business coach, someone like Tyson, for example, or maybe it's someone that does marketing with you, but just being a little bit more strategic and making sure that you're on track to hit the goals so you can have a profession to have a job, a profession, and a practice that really uh, bring you that satisfaction. It's amazing, like you said then about coaches as well, whether it's me or somebody else. To me, that's one of the things about having a coach in general is they keep you accountable. When you say to them, oh, this is what I want to do next month, and that month they're going to say, so did you do it? Oh, no, yeah. yeah I and you can only make excuses for a certain amount of time until the, yeah, the coach will pull you up on it. And I find uh, people that I've actually worked with, the people that I don't work with for very long are usually the people that are constantly just wanting to get information, but then don't actually take any action on it. And then they end up, because they don't take any action, they just keep wanting more. They end up just information overload and they, and then they leave because they're thinking, oh, I've got too much. I've got to get through all this first. When I get through all this, then I'll come back. And unlike the St Stephen King novels, they don't come back. <laughs> I know Stephen King said, sometimes they come back, but in the coaching world, when a client leaves, they don't come back. They never come back. And when I talk to other coaches, they all say the same thing. No, they never come back. And it's because 
they haven't taken action on the information. So I, I think this mid-year check-in, perfect thing, because usually at the beginning of the year, everybody's saying, this is what I want to do this year. And they get so fired up. And the next thing, it's the 18th, 19th of December, and they go, oh, shit, what happened then? And they look back. That year went fast, but next year is going to be the year that I'm going to tear it up. So I think the mid-year check-in is a good reality check. Yeah, I think it's, we all get busy in the day-to-day -day and uh, putting this on the calendar, spending a few hours either by yourself or with some people that you trust to hold you accountable is hugely important and hugely impactful on that second half of the, half of the year. Because like I said, in North America, get into vacation mode, people get out of vacation mode and they're like, okay, what do I do with the second half of the year? Obviously you're seeing patients, you're helping them get better. You got to pull, you got to not always be focused on working inside your business. You have to be working on your business as well. And this mid-year check-in really provides that. Yeah. Have you read that book, The 12-Week Year? I have not read that yet. No. It is an absolute ripper. And it's along this concept because they say most people, January, they set all these goals that they're going to do with the best intentions. Then it gets to December and they reckon they get more done usually in the, the last four weeks of the year than they do the <laughs> other 48 weeks of the year because they just keep putting it off. Whereas midlife, that uh, midlife, the mid-year check-in <laughs> makes them think about that. But the 12-week year is about doing this every three months is for 12 weeks you set a goal and you've got 12 weeks to get it done then you have a week off then you have 12 weeks again so it's four times a year you're actually checking in and and pushing yourself not just doing it like once a year but if people don't want to do it four times a year at least do it twice a year check it out in june and then you'd say check it out again at the end of the year for sure okay you got anything else on this subject no, I think it's just a matter of, like I said, set those goals, but like you got to keep consistent and this mid-year check-in just really gives you a chance to get back on track if you're off track. And if you're on track and you're killing it, just give you some more motivation to kick ass the second half of the year. Okay, Jim, I'll bid you farewell. Have a fantastic birthday. And, <laughs> and Jim accepts gifts. If you want to send him something, just send him a message. Hey, Jim, what's your postal address? And we'll send you something awesome. So I hope you have a fantastic day. Appreciate it, Tyson. Thanks. All right. Okay, talk to you next week. Bye now. Okay, bye.